let's open up some new possibilities by adding doors, trap doors, buttons and pressure blades to the game. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, like already said, buttons, pressure plates, doors and trap doors are going to be added. All four of those to sort of end the saga of the non-block blocks, as I like to call them. And we're just going to immediately jump in. We're going to copy the titanium slab four times so that we have four different registry objects here. And the first is going to be the titanium button. And this is going to be the titanium button as well. And this is actually going to be a stone button block. Because, of course, we have to specify which type of block it's going to be. So there's the stone button block. If we go into this class by middle mouse button clicking, we can see that there's also a button block. And if we go into here and press Control H, we can see that there's also the wood button block. So they function in a, you know, a little bit of a different way. But overall, we're going to take the stone button block for this one. And here, actually, we don't need to change anything. But then when it comes to the pressure plate, which is going to be the next one. So this is the titanium underscore pressure underscore plate. And then, of course, the same thing here. Titanium underscore pressure underscore plate. This one is going to be a pressure plate block. This one right here and this actually takes in a sensitivity as its first parameter so we're going to say sensitivity and then we can either choose everything or mobs we're just going to choose everything for the purposes of this but you can also of course change this and if you're more advanced in java you could of course also make your own sensitivity but that is definitely something that is for more advanced java people so keep that in mind when it comes to the door and the trap door, they are also fairly similar. So this is going to be the titanium door and titanium underscore door here as well. This is a door block. Now for the door, we're actually going to have to add another property here. And that is going to be the no occlusion property. You have this when you basically have alpha values inside of your block. So of course the door usually has some sort of see-through and that is basically the alpha values inside of the textures. So if you have that, then you need the no occlusion here as well. And the same thing is going to happen for the trap door, the trap door here and then trap door right here as well. And this is a trap door block right here. And then right at the end here, once again, the no occlusion call right here. And then here, everything is set up. Of course, once again, everything is available in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists as well. So you can copy over stuff and you don't need to type everything out yourself. Inside of the tutorial mod class, we actually need to add a new method in here. And that's going to be a private void setup client method. And this will have a final FML client setup event called event. And instead of here, we'll actually have to set the render layer for both the door and the trap door. So this is going to be item block render types dot set render layer and then mod blocks dot titanium. This is the titanium door. So it's down here, this one dot get. And then the second parameter is going to be the render type dot cutout. And we can simply copy this and then choose the trap door right here uh, like this. There you go. Now we need this in order for the actual block when it actually touches another block to not clip through the world. So the idea is that if you don't have this, then you're going to see basically through the world. You're basically going to have like a X-ray vision. And that's of course not quite what we want. There's also one more thing that we need to do, and that is add this to the event bus. So we can duplicate this add listener method here, this call, and then say set up client. And then this will also be called on the event bus therefore making these things with basically you know registering them on the client and now once again everyone's favorite part the json files so first of all of course the json files for the block states this is going to be four of them of course so one for the button the door the trap door and the pressure plate and they are all crazy if i do say so myself so once again, we have the different block state properties here, which basically then point to different models. If you want to change something in here, so for example, if you have a different mod ID, you can select it and press Control R and then it basically change the name here. And the same goes for the name here. So if this is not titanium, this is maybe Ruby, for example, then you can also select it, press Control R and change it here as well. Another great tip is you can also press Control Shift R and then you can change it in multiple files. That is something to keep in mind because I always say, well, just copy over those files. So if you have another door and stuff like that, you should definitely just copy them over because this is absolutely crazy. Right, when we take a look at the other ones, the button here, as you can see, is also pretty crazy. The door, once again, also pretty crazy. And the pressure plate is actually fairly easy. This is sort of the outlier here. Right, we're not going to go into too much detail. I sort of explained the block states in a little bit of detail in the last tutorial already. 
the idea is just that based on the different block states properties here, we're basically choosing a different model to point to, or we're, for example, rotating the block in some direction. Right, and then let's also add the translation immediately here. So I've once again copied this over, of course, for you available in the GitHub repository or in the gists. So this simply, once again, is just the translation, just so that we don't forget it, because of course now come the block model JSON files, and those are going to be quite a few. And now onto the block model JSON files, and there's going to be 12 of them. So like I said, once again, quite a few actually. And as you can see, there's three for the button actually. So the interesting one is the button inventory and to sort of sum everything up here, what really changes is the parent at the very top, almost the only thing that really changes for all of them because all have the actual titanium block texture except for both the trapdoor. This is going to point to the titanium trapdoor texture and the door as well. It's also going to have actually two different textures, the top door and the bottom door. So they're, of course, sort of separated in two different textures and in two different blocks. And that's why they have two textures. Right, when it comes to the item models, we, of course, once again, have just four because, of course, we just have four items. There's really nothing interesting going on here. The only interesting thing is the titanium door because instead of actually referring back to the block model to be displayed in the inventory, the titanium door actually has its own item texture. So that's really the only thing that is different here. And when it comes to textures, let's also just get the textures over here. So those are going to be three block textures the bottom and the top for the normal door, and then the trap door, and then of course also the titanium door texture as the item here, and that would actually be all that we need to add. Once again, of course, everything available for download for you in the description below, and now after everything has been added, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft, and as you can see, the actual door and the pressure plate and the button have been added, as well as the trap door, as you can see, and everything works fine, so you can see through it. So I've basically added like one little peephole in here because of course this is a titanium door, it should actually be durable, but I didn't want to basically not include this because then of course we wouldn't have needed the no occlusion and the actual render call, but we can open it with both the button and the pressure plate and everything works totally fine. So that is actually pretty cool, I would say. Now the reason that the trap door and the door can't be opened by hand is because we've chosen the material metal here. If we were, for example, to pass in material.wood, then we would be able to open them by right clicking. But in this case, we've chosen the metal one. Right, and that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.